My name is Kainton and I've been a software engineer for about 20 years now and I'm going to teach you how to create a database in MySQL server. Now for you to have MySQL server and also have MySQL Workbench, which is a GUI for creating and managing database, you'll need to go to the, database, the MySQL uh, download page and download MySQL installer. So after downloading it, just follow the procedure to install it it's quite easy to install. I've downloaded it and installed it in my system as well. Once you install MySQL, you have MySQL available in the list of programs. So if you go down there in MySQL, you can find MySQL Workbench. MySQL Workbench is a powerful GUI for creating and managing MySQL databases, but now there is a catch. In MySQL, it could actually be a bit confusing. Meanwhile, when you open MySQL Workbench, you see some connections here. The one you are going to choose is local instance MySQL 80, or it could also be MySQL depending on the name you gave it when you installed it. So go ahead to click on it. But the problem with MySQL is that you always find it difficult to see how to create a new database. The reason is because MySQL does not call a database a database. Ironically, it calls a database a schema. So if you go to database, you'll never see create new database. And that is what I took me some time to figure it out when I was starting initially some years ago. So right now that I'm working with uh, my, uh, microservices and I'm going to be working with MySQL again, I want to teach help my subscribers and new programmers and DBA see that they have to learn MySQL and everything involved. So the first thing I want to do, or you need to do, is to click on schema to see the list of databases available. Well, before I continue, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button below this video. And that way you kind of motivate me to keep making this license. And also, when you subscribe, you I, I have a feeling that there are people I'm working with, uh, especially since I make these lessons for free. And you get updates when I make new lessons as well. So at this point, I expect that you've subscribed and like my video if, that is, if it's been helpful to you. So to create a new database, you simply right click and choose create schema. When you say create schema, you're actually saying create new database. And that is the confusion I wanted to solve. So at this point, you can just say, give it a name, users db. Now the, the case does not matter because it's going to end up changing the case to lower case. So we've created a database. You can see the DDL statement uh, at this point generated as well. So we've created a database called users db at this point. And the next thing we want to do, the next logical thing is to create a table inside this database. To create a table, you expand the database uh, tree and then choose tables and say create table. When you say create table, the first thing you do is to give it a name. So let's call it student. Now, if you are a developer or a DBA here, this time in 2019, you'll see that it's necessary for you to give your tables names, which is the same as the names of the classes defining your application that maps to this table. So before now, we normally name tables, so we have a convention of naming tables with plural, like students or users. But it's good uh, also to name it uh, with the same name so that it maps to classes in your application. Well, that we'll talk about when we talk about ORM, object rel relational mapping, later on. So let's say we have ID to be the primary key, and then we have first name, and first name should be Vacha, and also last name. So if by chance you don't have the primary key selected, you're also going to be able to save this and create this table, but there'll be a problem. Take note that the DDL statement is also created. If you want to copy it and paste somewhere for references, uh, you can do that. So while we have created a new table, so if we expand the table uh, node, you can see students has been created. 
but we will not be able to edit this table. So if I go to select 1000, you see that I cannot even add anything to this table. And the reason is because I don't have a primary key created for this table. Now, now I've also arranged this tutorial in this way so that I can show you how to alter or change a table. So to change this table, just right click on it and choose alter table, alter table, and it allows the option to select the primary key. So you can have this PKNNUQ. We'll talk about this a little later, but for now you'll see what they mean. Yeah, the, the full names are written here. So select the primary key and just say apply and say apply. And at this point, once you've done this, you'll be able to edit the table content by right clicking on it and say select 100. Uh, 1000 rows. So at this point, if you right click here, you'll be able to add item uh, to this table. So you can see I'm easily adding item to this table. But after adding items, you will need to make sure that you say apply so that these items will be persisted. So I'm going to say apply and apply again and finish. So these items have been added, or this record has been added, added to this table right now. So if I right click on this table and say select 1000 rows, you can see that we have one row available in there. I'm going to stop here. I'd like to thank you for viewing. Remember to subscribe to my channel and that way you get updates and notifications when I make new lessons. And also if you have any challenges because I can help you or solve your challenges if you have, I'll leave it for me in the comment box below. And we we'll see you in the next class.